Good morning. Welcome to South Arm United Church Worship. This is the third Sunday after the Epiphany. We acknowledge that we are located on the traditional indigenous territory of Coast Salish peoples, and that we are guests in this land. Come, let us worship God. God built the heavens, the earth, and everything in them. God calls us to be builders as well. God calls us to build our lives, to restore broken places and continue to grow. God calls us to build our community, to build bridges of understanding and systems of justice. God calls us to build history by fulfilling the promises of scripture, to pre preach the good news of God's love and liberation for all people. Let us pray. Holy One, we thank you for the gift of the Bible, for its psalms and poems, myths and stories, histories, teachings, and prophecies. May the Holy Spirit who called out those ancient writings continue to call us out today, that our lives may reflect the first sermon of Jesus, our crucified and risen Christ, who brings good news to the poor and let the oppressed go free. In Jesus' name, we pray. Let us say this offertory prayer together. God of life and of new life, bless the gifts people bring that we have given that they may further your reign in this world. Amen. reading from Luke chapter 4 verses 14 to 21. Then Jesus, filled with the power of the Spirit, returned to Galilee, and a report about him spread through all the surrounding country. He began to teach in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, and to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. And he rolled up the scroll gave it back to the attendant and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, 
Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. Listen for God's good news. Thanks be to God. Good morning, everybody. By the time of this recording, uh, outside our church property, there is a, uh, a pump station replacement project going on. There's some noise. I hope it is manageable. And I hope you are fine physically, spiritually, and mentally, especially our mental health. We are on this boat together. Um, it is not an easy time. I encourage you to get in touch with your inner being and know how you feel every day. In any case, if you don't feel good, call your best friend and start a conversation. And of course, I am available if you need me. I hope we will find ways to keep ourselves on the positive side of things, especially this time of the year and what is going on in the world. We need one another. And in our world, it's such a chaos in many ways. Although different in context, we aren't too far away from the time of Jesus when many people in the first century also were perplexed about the future. The empire has settling in, seems to stay forever, and life is a mess. And it seems there is no way out. Anybody care about us? In reading the Bible, this context can be a constant reminder so that we know how, it's, how the words mean, meant to them as much as how they mean to us today. And of course, it's just a matter of degree. I don't think anybody is prepared. Everybody was surprised. Well, we can use this line any time of the day. Today, we have a gospel text talking about Jesus going to the Jerusalem temple and reading a text from Isaiah. That shows how Jesus began his ministry. In those days, a visiting rabbi would often be invited to read from a sacred text and teach. The leader stood to read, set to teach. And that's why we hear Jesus rises to read. While we may be amazed by the people's reaction after Jesus had done reading, this is part of what Jesus read. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Now, what Jesus has done or, or read in the weaves Isaiah, um, some chapters, I will give you that text in the written form. But all those texts kind of forming a Jewish understanding that we call Jewish Restoration Theology. That theology says that God intends to restore the now broken world into the condition of Genesis chapter 1 and 2. The text Jesus read reinforces the idea of restoration or to fix the world. In many ways, we ask Jesus to bring us wholeness. But on the other hand, Jesus is also sending us out to the world to restore wholeness. We are in partnership with Jesus. Talking about restoring the world. Restoring the world is a recurring theme in the Bible, which forms the core foundation for Jesus' ministry and his teaching. But his understanding wasn't strong in me until I met a Jewish seminarian, Paula, where she told me the idea of Tikkun Olam. This idea I have told you before, and I have shared this story with, about Paula before. She was a Jewish seminarian at the time I knew her. We were talking, or we were taking the same class together that was about educating in faith. Thanks to the wisdom of my mentor, Dr. Mary Boyce, she team taught this class with a Jewish educator, 
that gave me the wonderful opportunity to sit in the same classroom with 15 Jewish theology students. When I think about it, it was just a marvelous opportunity. When I bring up the term intercultural dialogue or interfaith learning, it sounds so academic. Often it is just a nice idea. But when we meet someone face to face and in such an intense learning environment, our lives will not be the same. Formerly, it may be just a concept, but now it is a reality. That amount of shock is no less when people heard Jesus read the text from Isaiah and realized something big is happening. The people knew what was in the text, but it is not the same when Jesus read it and make it applicable to himself and to the time they were facing. So let me go back to the idea of tikkun olam. During an evening meal, Paula and I sat down in an Italian restaurant in Upper Manhattan, New York. We talked about so many things, but I wouldn't miss the opportunity to ask her many things about Jewish culture and views. One of the topics I asked was Jewish understanding of the purpose of life. There was the time Paula mentioned the term tikkun olam to me. My friends, at the time I knew Paula, I was already ordained and served churches for many years. I came to New York to pursue a doctorate in education. I've never heard the term previously. I may have, that could be just my seriousness, but I confess that term isn't strong among Christian circles. The whole idea of tikkun olam is that God put us in this world to participate in the work of respiration. The world needs help, and God wants us to be part of it, to experience it. Will the world become perfect one day? I don't know. It seems this repairing work is endless, but at least it can be my purpose of living. When I'm done, someone else needs to continue. It is sometimes feels like an unfinished business. I love this idea. It helps me to be realistic about seeing imperfection in this world. Instead of complaining about what is wrong, it turns our energy into finding solutions. I know it is not easy, but it gives me some perspectives that wouldn't make me depressed endlessly. So, no, I say we may not be able to fix the world, but can we stop letting the world fix us? A simple smile or an act of kindness can make me an agent of positive change instead of an agent of depression. Think about that. That is the reason why I fell in love with photography, either through looking at someone else's work or my own. I learned to see the beauty of the world. It helps me insist that it's still goodness, beauty, and kindness in the world. That it is worth our time and effort to preserve it and not give up. So, May I ask, what can you do to make the repairing work a little more enjoyable and hopeful? Yes, you. You can make this world more livable than yesterday. Let us try. Amen. God of prophets and apostles, you call us to restore that which is broken and to proclaim your vision of a world made new. Create in us new hearts and strong voices as we pray. God, fill us with the power of your spirit. We pray for those who have been anointed or chosen as leaders of people, that they may attend to the voices 
of their people and be guided by you. God, fill us with the power of your spirit. We pray for the pastors and teachers of the church that they may faithfully interpret your word for others. God, fill us with the power of your spirit. We pray for those who are poor and in need of assistance and for ourselves, that we may open our hearts to their cries of help. God, fill us with the power of your spirit. We pray for those who are captives of war and the victims of violence. May we bring them good news, both in word and deed. God, fill us with the power of your spirit. We pray for those with physical challenges and spiritual struggles. Make us agents of healing and hope. God, fill us with the power of your spirit. We pray for those who are oppressed by powers beyond their control. Give us courage to work to set them free. God, fill us with the power of your spirit. God of the Jubilee, make us the body of the risen Christ united in all our diversity. Animate us by your Holy Spirit that together we may work toward your coming kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This day is holy to our God, so let us all be filled with joy. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Mm -hmm.